Uh, our next speaker is uh, Maria Ines Frank, a professor of canon law, academic secretary uh, at the Pontifica Universidad Católica Argentina, a member of the Legislative Issues Commission and Argentine Conference of Catholic Bishops. Her talk is on St. John Paul II and respect for local cultures. So uh, a little more about our next speaker. She's a, a, a lawyer and political scientist. She's also a canon lawyer and the academic secretary of the canon law faculty um, at the Argentine Pontifical Catholic University in Buenos Aires. She teaches at the university's social science and the law faculties. She's a co-founder of the Center of Bioethics, Person and Family, a think tank on public policies and lawmaking in Argentina. Um, Professor Frank specializes in prevention of sexual abuse of children and is a frequent consultant of the Con Conference of Bishops on those issues. So welcome, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. I, first of all, I, will, I would like to thank the Ave Maria Law School and the person of Ligia Castaldi also, and to the um, Cardinal Wyszynski University for, for the invitation to be, to be here. I am very glad because I have a all of, us, all of us have, I think, a particular love for John Paul II, and to be here the very day of his birthday is very important. Well, from the beginning of his pontificate, John Paul II showed an interest and deep concern for the problems of cultures. This led him to repeatedly speak out on the issue and even to create a specific dicastery, the Pontifical Council for Culture, to deal with this issue. It is enough just to recall the familiar expression of evangelization of culture or inculturation of, of the gospel, which John Paul II helped to popularize and which brings so many reminiscences to those of us who are, who are already of a certain age, because it marked many years of pastoral action of the church through the world. Even today, the expression is still used very frequently. Throughout his pontificate, then, John Paul II has had numerous interventions on the cultural question, which can be considered a central axis in his teach teaching. The first element I would like to remark is the definition, is about the definition of culture. We can differenti differentiate some elements in John Paul II's discourse on cultures. A first element revolves around the first approximation to the term culture, which is characterized as a universal phenomenon. All cultures, as it is stated in the first number of the encyclical Fides et Ratio, emerge at the same time the, ba the basic questions that characterize the journey of human existence. Who am I? Where do I come from? And where am I going? Why evil exists? Why is, uh, what is after this life? End of quotation. John Paul II defined culture with different, different words as that through which man, as man becomes more man, this is a quotation of John Paul II, or as another quotation, a specific way of existing and being of man, and also as a qualified expression of man and his historical vicissitudes, both individually and collectively. End of quotation. Finally, and perhaps the most practical definition, definition culture is defined as the set of principles and values that constitute the ethos of a people. Culture is not fixed, rather it is something dynamic, which is being transformed due to the encounters between men and the reciprocal exchanges of their life models. And I quote, cultures are nourished by the communication of values and their vitality and subsistence come from their ability to remain open to welcoming the new. This quote is from the encyclical Fides et Ratio also. The second element I would like to remark is the existence of different cultures. I think Pope uh, uh, Jean Paul II remarks very, uh, very high standing this fact. Cultural vitality 
is manifested, among other things, in the formation and development of numerous local cultures. So as a second distinctive feature of the Polish Pope's approach to the theme of culture, we must say that more than any other pontifice, John Paul II insisted on speaking of cultures in the plural rather than, rather than culture in the singular. This cannot surprise us in a pope who gave his pontificate such a traveling and cosmopolitan character. In the address to the United, United Nations Organization for Education, Science, and Culture, the Polish pope affirms that I quote, man always lives according to, the, to a culture, which is specifically his, and which, in its turn, creates among men a tie which is also specifically theirs, determining the interhuman and social character of human existence. In the unity of culture as the specific way of human existence, there is rooted at the same time the plurality of cultures in the midst of which man lives. In this plurality, man develops without losing, however, the essential contact with the unity of culture as the fundamental and essential dimension of his existence and his being." End of quotation. In 2001, John Paul II recognized that one and I quote, one is amazed at the complex and various manifestation of human culture. Each of them differs from the others due to its, due to its specific historical itinerary and the consequent characteristics features that make it unique, original, and organic in its own structure. End of quotation. When mentioning this theme of the cultural manifest manifestation of humanity, it becomes impossible not to mention the testimonials number 14 and 15 of the speech of the, to the United Nations Organizations for Education, Science, and Culture, in which John Paul II, in an evidently proudly manner, uses his nation's own experience as an example to affirm that the sovereignty of people lies ultimately in the strength of their culture. Let me extract the gist of these two issues to read it without you. I apologize for doing that, but uh, I think every word worth it and it has, it has, it has no waste, waste at all. So John Paul II say, said, I am the son of a nation who has lived the greatest experience of history which his neighbors have condemned to death several times, but which has survived and remained itself. It has kept its identity, and it has kept, in spite of partition, partitions and foreign occupations, its national sovereignty, not by relying on the resources of physical power, but solely by relying on its, on its culture. This culture, turned out in the circumstances to be more power powerful than all other forces. There exists a fundamental sovereignty of society which is manif manifested in the culture of the nation. It is a question of the sovereignty through which, at the same time, man is supremely sovereign. When I express myself in this way, I am also thinking with deep interior emotion of the cultures of so many ancient peoples which did not give way when confronted with the civiliz civilizations of the invaders, and they still remain for man the source of his being as a man in the interior truth of his humanity. I am also thinking with admiration of the cultures of new societies, those that are awakening to life in the community of their own nation, just, just as my nation awakened to life 10 centuries ago, and that, are, and that are struggling to maintain their own identity and their own values against the influences and pressures of modern proposals from outside. And I, I have to, to, to finish the, the, the paragraph. Addressing you, John Paul II says, I say to you, with all the means 
at your disposal, watch over the fundamental sovereignty that every nation possesses by virtue of its own culture. I, I end of quotation. John Paul II is telling us that here that local cultures base nothing more and nothing less than the sovereignty of a nation. This is an interesting contribution not only to the magisterium of the church, to the teaching of the church, but also to contemporary sociological political thought. Pope Jean Paul also provides us with an answer and an antidote to cultural colonialism that he will also courageously denounce. But in addition, local cultures play a fundamental role as configuring element of personality. Indeed, he said, without his rooting in a defined humus, the person himself will run the risk of being exposed to an excess of contrasting stimuli that would not help serene and balanced development. development. It is based on this fundamental relationship with one origins at the family level, but also territorial, social, and cultural, that the sense of homeland develops in people and culture ten tends to assume sometimes more and others less a national configuration." End of quotations. The third element I would like to remark is those of migrations, cultural minorities, and multiculturalism. The emphasis placed on the variety and multiplicity of cultures coincides with the great diffusion of the concept of, of multiculturality and multiculturalism in the field of contemporary social science. And also that was dri driven by the importance acquired by the phenomenon of migration and migrants. Entire members of different ethnic groups living together within states where both in language and the customs, beliefs, and practice do not coincide and could ever be conflictive with the consequent potential for conflict that this situation could entail. The recognition of the identity of these minorities was not raised in an easy way in contemporary societies and a reflection of it was necessary to find channels for dialogue and meeting. John Paul II takes the cause of these cultures to himself, clearly establishing the rights and obligation of migrations and local minorities. I have to short because I, I, I think I, I, I'm going to be running out of time. The fourth element that I think is very important regarding this topic is the understanding of the concept of globalization. This emphasis places on, on the respect for minorities and local cultures faces, still face, and even more still faces an even more subtle challenge an erroneous interpretation of the phenomenon of, of globalization through which, following an economist and market logic, some claimed impose a single culture and way of being on all local cultures. And behind this imposition, let, let's not kill ourselves, a whole series of legal, social, and economic reforms were promoted that went far beyond consuming this or that food or listening to this or that type of music or dressing on in this or that way. A certain standardization of societies could come from the misunderstanding of the phenomena of globalization. Several times, Pope John Paul II raised his voice to, war to warn about these pretensions that entered almost inadvertently in local cultures. The dangers, the loss of authentic values around which entire peoples have built their way of life. And I quote, uh, this is the address to re the representatives of the world of culture and science in Georgia, uh, 1,999. We are currently witnessing a process of globalization which tends to underestimate diversity and variety, and which is characterized by the birth of new forms of, of ethnocentrism and exaggerated nation nationalism. In this situation, the challenge is to promote and transmit 
a living culture, a culture capable of promoting communication and brotherhood between the different groups and peoples and between the various fields of human creativity. In other words, today's world encourages us to know and respect each other in and through the, the diversity of our cultures. If we, do, if we do so, the human family will enjoy unity and peace, and the various cultures will be enriched and renewed, purified of everything that represents an obstacle to mutual encounter and dialogue." End of quotation. John Paul II repeatedly expresses, expresses the church's concern regarding globalization and the identity of local cultures, especially the fact that globalization precisely has quickly become a cultural phenomenon. For the Polish Pope, this meant that the market as a, mechanism, as a mechanism of exchange of exchange has become the instrument of a new culture, presenting an intrusive, he said, and even invasive character. The market imposes its way of thinking and acting and imprints its scale of values on behavior. Those who are subjected to it often see globalization, globalization as a destructive torrent, a destructive torrent that threatens the social norms that have protected them and the cultural reference point that have given them an orientation in life. This is from the address to the Pontifical Academic of Social Science, part 201, number three of the, of, the, of the document. This process challenges and hits local cultures hard as it occurs too quickly for cultures to respond. And in this way, globalization often runs the risk of destroying carefully constructed structures, requiring the adoption of new styles of work, life, and organization of communities. Also, on another level, the use made of discoveries of the, in the biomedical field tend to catch policymakers of off guard. The research itself is often financed by private groups and its results are commercialized even before the process of social control can be set in motion. That's true of the address to the Pontifical Academy of Social Science. Once again, uh, it is, there are two principles that should guide ethical discernment in the context of globalization. First of all, the inalienable, inalienable value of the human person and the value of human cultures, that no external power has the right to undermine, much less to destroy. To destroy. In this sense, John Paul II affirms globalization must not be a new type of colonialism, but must respect the diversity of cultures which, in the sphere of the universal harmony of, people, of peoples, are the keys to interpreting on, of, the life, of the life. In particular, it does not have to deprive the poor of what is most valuable to them, including their religious beliefs and practices, since authentic religious convictions are the clearest manifestation of human freedom. They are the universal human values that underline local culture, the force that guides all development and progress. In conclusion, there was a time when for a very wide spectrum of cultures, the Christian message meant a common assumption in which fruitful dialogue could be conduct conducted while respecting differences. Our time does not seem to have that presupposed factor, and then the differences appear in the foreground without a substratum that identif identifies common values. Despite this, the deepest question of humanity remain always the same. The attempt to provide this substratum through human rights appear weak and unconvincing now, probably because the foundation of these rights, as they seem to be conceived today, does not root too clearly in universal reasons that give them full legitimacy. The diversity of cultures does not contradict the common nature, the common nature of the human person, since, since as Pope uh, John Paul II said, cultures are always characterized by some stable and lasting elements and by others that are dynamic and contingent. It is about solidarity, peace, life, education, forgiveness, and reconciliation. These common values humanity express its most 
its most authentic and important traits and of cooperation. These values are rooted in people's nature and are the foundation of all cultural dialogue. While the church finds the way to re-strengthen the ability to challenge the men and women of today with the evangelical message in order to once again constitute a common substratum that bases the values and dignity of the person, these values must be underpinned to be able to sustain, albeit weekly, and acceptably dialogue and coexistence between the various cultures and local perspectives. Mace and John Paul II are the promoter of the centrality of cultures accompany this path that humanity is currently facing. Thank you very much.